and welcome to yet another exciting episode of iBuzz. Today's special tribute episode is for Madonna. It's her, her birthday month. Ref referred to as the queen of pop, she is regarded as one of the most influential figures in popular culture. This August 16, Madonna celebrated her 63rd birthday. TV presenter Jean-Paul joins us for further discussion on this. Jean, welcome to the show. Hi, Nasheen. Thank you very much for having me. And thank you for joining us. So, no noted for her continual reinvention and versatility in music production, songwriting and visual presentation, how would you describe the queen of pop? Ooh, I'm not sure, sure we have time for, for a whole description. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I think um, Madonna's... <laughs> Yeah, that's a tough one. It is. I mean, as a, I think as an artist, mm -hmm. Madonna's had a really eclectic career, um, you know, because she's been around for a few decades. And mm -hmm. I think what I would, the one word I'd use to describe her in terms of professionalism in her career is sustainable, because she's managed mm -hmm. to survive um, at a high level in the music industry for a few decades by changing mm. um so if you look at her career i mean there's so much of it we wouldn't have time to talk about it all today mm. but if you look at her career she's gone through so many changes throughout yes. um adapting to you know the changes in life mm. and society as well as music so i'd look at her as being sustainable that's why i think she's mm. so successful yes. there's lots of artists who have been big in their careers but they don't last as long as she does. She's really, you know, got that word sustainability going, I think. Mm -hmm. And her works, which incorporate social, political and religious themes, have generated both critical acclaim and controversy. But knowing the fact that she belongs to the 80s and 90s, where filtration process in media was on the rise, that is pretty daring to step forward, like, isn't it? It is. And, um, I mean, she's been daring from day one. I mean, you know, um, I think her first album and, you know, biggest success uh, in the 80s was mm. Like a Virgin. Yes. Um, so, I mean, <laughs> that really tells you from the get-go, mm -hmm. you know, where her, her, um, her aspirations are mm. and that she doesn't have, you know, the boundaries mm. that other artists have had at that time. So mm. she's always been very daring. And not just in terms of the music she's put out, she's very daring in her life. I mean, she left home at a young age mm -hmm. and, you know, moved to a different part of the world to mm -hmm. further her career. Mm -hmm. And John, I would like you to talk about how Madonna's music kept evolving over the years. I mean, how she worked on syncing each album with the trends of music accordingly. I mean, each year, each time she would release an album, it was according to the music trends of those times. Yeah, I mean, I compare her to, a, 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 you know, the sort of creative, mm -hmm. the creativity she has, I compare her to Prince mm -hmm. in a way. Yes. Um, because I listened to Prince for over a few decades. Mm -hmm. And again, Prince, you know, his music just kept evolving, kept changing, mm -hmm. and he was so creative. You could listen to an album from the 80s and you could listen to an album from the noughties and mm -hmm. you could see how much has changed and how relevant his music still is. And I found that with um, uh, with Madonna as well, because if you went back and listened to her music from the 80s, it was mm. very, you know, um, poppy, very yes. commercial, very re rebellious, you know, in the lyrics. Mm -hmm. But then moving into the sort of techno trance, um, you know, moving into the sort of commercial, she's never really done a lot of R&B. Yeah. But her music has always been very eclectic and very, mm -hmm. um, as I said, very creative, diverse. So, you know, a very, very creative artist. I mean, mm -hmm. she's had some good writers working for her. Yeah. But one of the things about her as, a, as an artist is the way that she sings. Mm -hmm. Lyrically, you can't tie her down to any, just any particular decade because mm -hmm. her voice, Absolutely. her voice has got that translucent kind of like, you can't tie it down um, vibe if you like. True. True. And you know, when you listen to her songs, I mean, they seem to be way ahead of their time. They absolutely fit in the musical frame that we have today. Yeah, very much so. Um, the last album that I really liked of hers, um, oh, what was it called? It was, I think it was called Rebel mm -hmm. with um, Heart. Well, Heart of Rebel, I can't remember. It was Rebel something and Heart in there. Um, and I listened to that album a lot. 
And um, I love that she had tracks of Kanye where mm -hmm. she had tracks, uh, you know, Mike Tyson featured on a track with her as well. Mm -hmm. And I remember listening to this album and thinking, how is she managing to yeah. put music together like this after 35 years? And I listened to the album properly and I thought, it's, it's a really, really good album and it actually inspired feeling in me in the album. I thought, yeah. You know, I don't know how she's doing it, but mm -hmm. she's 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 a great artist. She's nailing it, absolutely. And Jan, uh, we will now discuss a bit of acting career that Madonna had, especially her movie uh, Evita, that won her a Golden Globe Award for Best Actress. So how would you shed some light on her acting skills? Well, I was I was I always knew she could act because mm -hmm. um, in the 80s, she did a film called um, Desperately Seeking Susan. Mm -hmm. So and that that featured one of her songs i think get into the groove and get into the groove uh, into the groove was a number one hit in the uk and the us for for ages mm -hmm. um and then when i saw her acting in the film i realized she can act because she has got that kind of um very dramatic uh, style about her um so when i saw her acting in evita i was surprised i wasn't surprised mm -hmm. at her acting ability because i knew she had that mm -hmm. but i was surprised that she would act in something like that mm -hmm. because the purity that you need to sing something like don't cry for me argentina mm -hmm. was very different from what she'd been doing before she was being you know heavily criticized you know critics were having a real go good go at her for her raunchiness and her mm -hmm. sexiness and the way she was flouting her sexuality mm -hmm. and also things like, um, uh, you know, uh, sadomasochism and bondage and all that kind of stuff, which she was becoming sort of, you know, known for uh, creatively. Mm -hmm. So then to see her turn around and, and be in Evita, I was like, wow. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I know she could act, but I didn't know that she could walk that line now to mm -hmm. do something so artistically clean. Do you know what I mean? Absolutely. So uh, incredible. Uh, Jan, her other ventures include fashion brands, children's books, health clubs, and filmmaking. Uh, she contributes to various uh, charities, having f founded this uh, foundation, which is called Ray of Light. Uh, by the way, that's one of my favorite songs of her as well. So uh, that's <laughs> like called paying it forward. I mean, she had been through so much, being a victim of assault, and then she had this terrible tragedy of her mother passing away, and you know, um, hitting, getting hit with depression and all but still remaining like in the spotlight always and then paying it forward. Whatever she has earned, she's now contributing in the society. And that's a huge example for the artists today who probably think of themselves in their own career. And I mean, usually they have not been found paying it forward in the society. Yeah, and I mean, you know, add to that that she's got six kids. Yes. You know, she's... she's Four of them you know, are adopted. <laughs> There you go. So yeah. it's not just let me give money to a cause and then go yes. home and sit in my mansion with my friends. Exactly. You know, it's let me live the life. Mm -hmm. I have actually taken children on to mm -hmm. as a personal responsibility. That's more than just giving money. You're actually mm -hmm. living, you know, your cause. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, in that sense, yeah, I would say to you that, you know, she is a philanthropist and mm -hmm. You know, she does give a lot to causes. She really does have a very strong moral view about that. Um, she's a very strong woman. I think she's always been a great mod, a role model for, for mm -hmm. women, particularly in the 80s, 90s, and the millennium. But I think that part of uh, the generosity and giving, mm -hmm. it is quite easy to give when you've got a lot. Yes. All right? It's much easier to give when you've got a lot. But the thing about Madonna, as I said, is that she does live that life. She does mm -hmm. walk that path. Having those children, you know, I think recently she took pictures, I mean, for her Instagram with all of them. They had them all, she had them all together. You know, it's it's not easy to do stuff like that. You've got to live that life. And that's a tough one. She's always like children. And I think her experiences mm -hmm. growing up with her mum and then having a tough, having it tough when mm -hmm. she was growing up herself has made her a bit more, um, maybe a bit more compassionate to children as mm -hmm. they're growing up. And she's wanted to share and care so you can see that in her yeah. she does get a rough ride sometimes with the press but mm -hmm. overall i think she's she's done a lot of good tremendous amount of good true and being fa a famous star in the music industry means a lot of controversies coming your, your way and unfortunately madonna had been through all of this like being accused of joining the kabbalah 
then her music video of Like a Prayer, uh, her post on Instagram where she's reminding Jay-Z and Beyonce that she is the master. Madonna has always kept her tradition of shocking both fans and critics. How would you like to comment on that? Um, well, I think it's 50-50. I think, mm -hmm. you know, part of it is that she is, um, you know, a very different, quite a diverse person. So, you know, her views, her um, actions, her reactions are always going to be a little bit more shocking than the norm because that is partly who she is and that's part of her strength and her USP that's got her this far. And then also you've got to remember that you know, artists need to do that sometimes. They need to go out there and be controversial because, especially as they're getting older, um, I mean, if you see Madonna's features, they've changed quite a lot in the last few years. Exactly. So th there is an element, she's got a skincare um, product as well. There, you yes. know, there, there's, there's quite a lot that they need to do as they get older to still keep that remaining in the limelight, remaining relevant. You know, they do have in uh, massive insecurities. You know, they have yeah. huge, huge insecurities. What we see is not what they feel. And when you're feeling that insecure, you have to do things now and then to, you know, kind of get into the limelight because that's mm. that's part of what you need to do. So mm. some of it is she has been a controversial figure anyway. Mm -hmm. And some of it is I think you have to play a bit of a game cat and mouse with right. the media so that you can attract yeah. a bit of, um, you know, kind of mm -hmm. attention to be able to get your voice out there mm -hmm. and still be heard. Jan, thank you very much indeed for joining us. It was a pleasure talking to you. Thank you, Nosheen. Pleasure as always. Have a lovely day. Thank you very much. You too. That was Jean Paul paying a tribute to the birthday girl, Madonna. We will be right back after a quick short break, bringing you a review on the latest release, Mimi. Stay tuned. Welcome back, it's review time, and in this segment, we will review the latest release, Mimi. An aspiring acting actress in a small town agrees to bear a child for a visiting couple seeking a surrogate mother, but her experience takes unexpected turns. To review the movie, we are joined by film analyst and film critic, Mohar Basu. Mohar, welcome to the show. Thank you, Nosheen. So first things first, hands down to the brilliance that is added to the concept. A very unique blend of comedy, tragedy, and drama. I would like to know your initial thoughts when you watched the movie. So, um, the, I knew the film was in the making for a while, and uh, mm -hmm. it's, it's it's adapted from a Marathi film. Yeah, exactly. uh, The idea itself is very, very funny, um, because um, I, I think I saw the humor of it coming. Mm -hmm. But, you know, when a subject like surrogacy, or for that matter, adoption, which the film kind of advocates, is said with a little bit of light-handedness. I think it mm -hmm. gets pulled harder, and it kind of makes its point makes its point a lot more easier. Mm -hmm. So um, I really was very intrigued by the concept. I was very intrigued by the casting. Like someone like a Kriti Sanan, mm -hmm. who's a mainstream yep. commercial actress, playing that part, did take me by surprise. So yeah, mm -hmm. I think I think I was very positively looking forward to the film, and I happened to watch it recently and really enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. Right. So Mohar, from the characters, of course, one would love to begin with uh, Kriti Sanan and Pankaj Tripathi. Both were perfectly chosen the right way for their roles, but I would like you to comment on Shamsa, uh, Shama's character, Baisai, and then Eveline Edward, who has done a great job at communicating in Hindi throughout the movie. Right. Um, you know, Noshi and I remember the director had told me that uh, the, how he sees the film is that mm. it's, it's a story of two mothers. Yeah. So I guess that's why uh, both the mother characters have to be very strongly edged. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, both of them, Kriti and her, did great justice to their parts. Mm -hmm. When it comes to uh, Shama's character that's played, played by Sai Tamantar, um, mm -hmm. I found it very interesting because she's the friend that I think we all should have. Uh, yeah. This is the kind of friend that, that doesn't judge the life decisions mm -hmm. of her friend. She's a friend who will be with someone th through thick and thin. And even when, you know, um, you know, when when there was a whole conversation around what will happen to the yes. child now that it's been abandoned, she said, I will adopt it. Yes. I think I think that's a very that, beautiful... That was absolutely uh, brilliant. <laughs> very emotional, but brilliant at the same time. The placement very was beautiful. absolutely beautiful, yeah. Uh, and of yeah. course, about Lean, uh, what are your thoughts? Because that was like a surprise 
to a movie viewer when you know you're watching a movie and then you're watching an American actress speaking very fluently in Hindi. So how did you feel that yeah. that moment? Well, I have to commend her that the diction was spot on. She got Hindi absolutely correctly. Yeah. And uh, I was at surprise as Pankaj Tripathi when she started talking in Hindi. <laughs> so I just thought that's very nicely done. Mm -hmm. But I I think towards the climax, the the last couple of scenes of the film where she is, mm -hmm. I think she really needs the needs the emotion part of playing a mother. Mm -hmm. Like I think I think. Her character, you kind of uh, want to understand what really is motherhood. Is just giving yeah. birth to a child motherhood, or is it raising a child that's motherhood? So, mm -hmm. I just thought that she brought yeah. that emotion out very beautifully. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Uh, some of the critics shared uh, the, that uh, after ages, we got a movie like Mimi. Uh, content truly overrules cliche masala Bollywood movies. Gone were those days. Now, how would you like to comment on that? You know, I honestly have, I'm, I'm not the right person to answer that because I have never been a big fan of Bollywood masala films. Uh -huh. I feel content is, um, you know, I think a lot of people from our generation have uh -huh. also grown up on a lot of international content, including uh -huh. now Netflix and Amazon. Uh -huh. So I feel there's a certain expectation to evolve, uh, to evolve stories in that sense. Uh -huh. I think Mimi was that perfect blend of what is commercial and at the same time something that is very evolved in its narrative mm -hmm. so i really enjoyed mimi as a film because of that i think mm -hmm. i think it makes a very great point about adoption about surrogacy yeah. about mother and it is not really preachy because it does it in a funny funny sort of a way but at the same time in south asia especially mm -hmm. in south asian cultures when you discuss the idea of uh, lineage and you know how families mm -hmm. run. I think I think to to weave uh, the idea of adoption into mm -hmm. common common man narrative. I think yeah. that's very nicely done. Mm -hmm. And this is the kind of films that we should be making. That 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 is a blend of everything. At the same mm -hmm. time, leaves you with the thought and message. Absolutely. And Thor, let's talk about what makes this movie more emotional. The magic of A. R. Rahman's music. Please share your thoughts on that. Yeah. You know, honestly, um, I wasn't extremely impressed with A.R. Rahman's music in this particular mm -hmm. album. Like, had you not told me, I wouldn't probably have known that this is Rahman. Right. Because it's a very unusual Rahman mm -hmm. album in that sense. And probably, I don't want to like diss a very senior maverick of, of his mm -hmm. stature, but I just don't think it's one of his best works. But that said, a couple of songs do stay with you. Especially the song in the climax kind of yeah. stays with you. Because I think it... It beautifully captures the mm -hmm. child's uh, growing up years and how mm -hmm. he becomes a source of joy for the family. So I think, except for the, that song, I don't think mm -hmm. much of it stayed with me, really. Yeah, and the, the character development of Mimi herself is amazing. I mean, how, uh, you know, energetic they showed her in the beginning, that she's, you know, full of life. She doesn't care about what people think of her. She doesn't even care about her own family, that what will they think if she's, you know, moving ahead in life. And all, she's all full of life, but then when she becomes a mother, you know, slowly and gradually, there is a development in her character. So how would you like to comment on that? I have to say, Kriti Sanan has done a fantastic job with the film. Um, it takes an actor who's very self-assured to kind of mm -hmm. play this whole trajectory. Um, we see her in, in the first few scenes as this really... She's affirmative, she's sassy, she's all of those things. But she's also a silly girl, you know, initially, yeah. because she's talking to a poster of Ranveer Singh, that's who she is. Mm -hmm. But towards the last few scenes of the film, she comes of her own. I think mm. that journey to the film, I think she's played it step by step and very beautifully. Mm -hmm. um, the character itself um, kind of becomes something else that you were not expecting. But you know that this girl always had the makings of this person. It's mm -hmm. just that her life decision and these couple of years mm -hmm. of becoming a mother changes her. Mm -hmm. My favorite scene though is that scene where she, where she kind of debates with Evelyn's character saying, so what do you think is a mother? You you think just because you, you've kind of given uh, this is your baby in your head that that's, that, that's mm -hmm. not what a child is about. I have raised the kid so this kid is mine. So mm -hmm. I really thought that's very emphatically done. Mm -hmm. Right. And since the movie remake of a Marathi film, some critics have expressed that there is no going gaga over the content. What are your thoughts? You know, I am very disputed on the remake culture. I've always mm -hmm. been. But mm -hmm. I feel that if a film is well made, uh, I think you can excuse the fact that it 
it is anyway an officially adapted film not like they stole the idea mm-hmm. right so i feel there shouldn't be an issue because this is a well made film mm-hmm. and they've tried to make give it a different touch make it their own so i think we can forgive mm-hmm. them for that right the lack of novelty right right mohar it was great discussing this movie with you thank you very much indeed it's lovely speaking to you nashim thank you pleasure That was Mohar Basu reviewing Mimi. And that is it from today's episode. We hope you liked it. Don't forget to share your feedback on the social media link mentioned down below. We'll see you next time. Until then, take care and goodbye.